Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers and this is our kitchen. That's right. This is not a set. That's right. This is what we do and we're cooking dinner. Now I tell you what, when I think about it, most of the time we're cooking the big meal of the day, the right. evening meal. But we went to a restaurant the other day and what did you have? I had mushroom soup that was amazing. And what did you ask me to do? Please make this for me. <laughs> Which she does quite often. So. I was trying to taste this soup at one of our favorite restaurants yeah. and I tasted this soup and I tasted certain things in it. But I also thought when you do this for a while, you can start adding up in your brain and I, my inner Raul comes out, You're good my at old that. French yes. buddy. And I thought, okay, when he was making any kind of sauce or soup, he started with maybe red wine, then a bouillon and then a meat stock, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it's, there's a magic thing there. Yeah. So I thought we can do that. So I'm gonna make you some mushroom soup. Thank you, I love it. Did you like it? I did love it. Was it as good as the restaurant? It's better than the restaurant, but don't tell them. And she made something the other day that was just outstanding. Most of the time when we're in our kitchen, we look around and see what we have and we think, okay, mm -hmm. let's try this. There's a lot of happy accidents that happen. That's right. Every now and then there's something like, oh, that's probably not. Let's not make that let's again. Let's not make that again. <laughs> but the ones that come out really good, we're gonna to try to share with you. And what is that that you made? I actually made a strawberry bread. It's mm -hmm. delicious because mm -hmm. it's strawberry time. So it's it a wonderful is. time to do that. This is not a super sweet bread. No, it's not. But with a little bit of butter on it right out of the oven, I don't know if I've had anything better in a long time. There is some sugar, but not a ton of sugar. Just so show us how to do this, Ms. Right. This is absolutely wonderful. All right. Well, I have a pint of strawberries here. Okay. So that's actually like 16 ounces of strawberries and I'm going to take my magic little chopper. Okay. Because what I want to do is I want to chop these down and kind of puree them a little bit because I'm going to boil them for a little bit. That's going to be our base. You know, we had a banana sitting around here. I was wanting to do like a banana bread, but it had gone beyond its, its uh, yeah. expiration yes, date, it you could say. He was looking pretty poor and you had strawberries. And by golly, here's what we came up with. Chopper's wonderful. But I'm just gonna add them slowly because they're too big, and then I'm gonna chop them all the way down. And I've already washed these. Now something else um, that happens, if you're not a member of a CSA in this great United States of ours, check around you. I bet you somebody's got a way that you can get fresh vegetables if you don't grow them yourself. We like to grow oh, some yeah. stuff, but a lot of stuff we get from our CSA. Community Supported Agriculture. Chop these by hand or use a blender. Sure. But you know I love my little chopper. You could use a uh, potato masher. Yes, you could. All right. I'm going to take these and I'm going to get them all in there. And if you will go ahead and we'll get those going. And I just want to bring these to a boil on like a medium heat. Once they boil, we'll give it one minute. Really? No sugar? No, nothing. No, nothing of this. And then we're going to take them off and we're going to chill them Interesting. while we make the rest of our bread. It's boiling. And that's it. We've kind of boiled them, kind of got them to come together a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and just put it in a different container. Right. And we're going to stick this in the fridge while we get the rest of that bread ready. All right, what's next? See, it's almost two cups still. Gotcha. Right, so we put, let's put it in this pan because we're going to stick it in the fridge while we make the rest of this. Just chill it for a we're little bit? We're going to chill it while we make the rest of our bread. Our next thing is we have some flour. I have one and three quarters a cup of flour here. Gotcha. And I've already pre-mixed my one teaspoon of baking soda, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and three quarter teaspoons of salt spice. I got pumpkin pie spice. Or you could use cinnamon. So I, I like the pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie yeah. spice. Yeah. I'm just going to do half a teaspoon of that. Say pie. Pie. Pumpkin, say it like pumpkin pie. Say, say what? Pumpkin pie. Pie. Pumpkin pie. Pie and yes. pie. That's not very nice. But that's it. That's our powder mixture. So now if you'll be my helper with the mixer, All right. I'm going to put two eggs in. Two eggs. Once I get the two eggs in, we'll get this going. I'm going to watch it. I'll put it on too high a speed and I end up. It would fly all over the room. Don't do it. Wearing it. it. Cup of sugar. I mean, there's still a lot of Whoa. sugar, but we're going to go with a whole cup of sugar. Now, you know my lard. I have, to put, lard. I have, to got lard, have to have lard in everything. So I'm going to take a third of a cup of our lard. Do a little research on pasture-raised pig leaf lard. Mm -hmm. The science has changed. I would much rather use this than a vegetable oil-based oh, yeah. type thing. You They're finding it? out. They're finding out that, again, pasture-raised leaf lard from a pasture-raised pig is absolutely pretty good Wonderful. stuff. Wonderful. Our grandparents knew more than we thought. That's right. And this is our lard exactly. that we got from our friend who raises his pigs, pasture-raised pigs, mm -hmm. all natural. He gives us 
some of the fat, or we buy that for them. Right. We bring them to the crock pots, we reduce it mm -hmm. ourselves, and it's just absolutely wonderful. And I've gone through a couple jars already, because yes, I love this have. so much. All right. So this is mixing up? That's mixing up. All right, now we're going to do, I actually have a half a cup of heavy whipping cream here. All right, you may pour it in. We're going to do back and forth, though, watch. Oh, gotcha. So now I got my powder mixture. I jumped the gun. Yeah, so you'll be in charge of the powder. You just put a little bit so in. Pour this we're going to go back and forth, just a little bit. Put about a third of that in, and I'll put a little of mine in. A little yours, and I'll do a little mine. We're going to go back and forth. We get it all Here's in there? Here's where I'm going to be wearing this. All right, go ahead and turn that off for a minute. All right. I'm going to grab my strawberries. Ooh, it already smells good. All right, if you want to turn it back on. Okay. I'm going to slowly add back my strawberries. And this turned out a lovely dark color. Yes, it did. Go ahead and give that a good mix if you want. And how much do you mix it? Look. That's good if you want to stop right that. There. Now the last ingredient, pecans. Pecans. I got like a little you over chop them? Yes, half a cup. And we're going to chop those up. You go ahead and mix those and that'll be it. No wonder this was so good. I didn't want you to make that. What put it think? in a loaf pan and go? Mm -hmm. What temperature? I think that's good. We're going to put 350. I already have the oven going for one hour. One hour. Yep. 350. And I think we're good. Thank you so much. Oh, it smells good. I have my little pan already ready to go here. I greased it. And it does smell good. Thanks, smell good. That's it? That's all? Do you want to open the oven for me? Ooh, let's let this go for one hour. That looks gorgeous. I'll tell you what, let's get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna start the soup. Yay. You know what? Just thought of something. Normally when you watch this show, it's a very meat and potatoes type of show, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of a, well, we're kind of in the South. Right. And there's a lot of stuff that's kind of, uh, some people consider heavy. Do you realize this is a soup and salad show and mm -hmm. bread? Mm -hmm. It's not terrible, right? It's not terrible. It's pretty healthy. It's good. It's healthy. All right, let's get this cleaned up in mushroom soup. Some people have told us here recently that they didn't like onions. Hmm. And so I told them, somebody I know personally, I said, you've probably had red onions or something very strong, right. and you reacted to those if they were raw, so on and hmm. so forth. You get a yellow sweet onion or a Vidalia onion, the sugar in these things is outstanding. It is. The flavor profile is so different from anything you could imagine with a red onion. So for those out there who think they don't like onions or think they don't like mushrooms, I think this would be the entry level dish for you to rediscover. I think you're right. Your taste buds. Good idea. Nikki loves, dare I say, really loves mushroom soup? I do. I like mushroom anything, but mushroom soup is one of my true. favorites. My old buddy Raul, he always said, trust your senses, trust your olfactories. So we came home and I started being the mad scientist. You did. So let's start this recipe. You know what, I'm going to let you do that for me if you will. Right. I'm going to go ahead and put a little butter in here. So many recipes you have seen us begin with butter and onions. And again, those sweet yellow onions, they add something that's almost indescribable. So that's where we're beginning. I'm going to take some baby portobello mushrooms. And I'm just going to cut those up into manageable sized pizzas. And I'm going to saute those with the onions. Nick, if you don't mind, would you pop those onions on over here and let them get... I will. Let them start to get going. Do you want all of this or just a little bit? What do you uh, think? Oh, let's use most of it. All right. Now that's half of a very large sweet onion. I was never a big mushroom fan until later in life. And now that I've rediscovered them, I could eat them. I could live on them. Me too. We took a walk around the farm today hoping to find some different mushrooms. And we looked and we looked, and that's all we came up with today. Right at the end. Right at the end. And these are a type of coral fungus. And you can see why, they really look like a, they do. a piece of coral out of the ocean. We have found a chicken of the wood. We have found a puff ball. And Rick, down the road, we found morels on his place. And on Kelly's place, we found a pheasant back mushroom all of which we have consumed on the show. So we're gonna get our onions going pretty good here. You know what, let's measure the mushrooms. See how much we have here. And there's more there than I thought. How many cups is that measuring? That's four cups. This is about four and a half cups. 
So one more thing that I'm going to do here real quick like is I'm going to cut me some fennel out of this bulb. Now tell me what this smells like to you, if you will. Why can't I say, what, what is it? A little anise yeah, flavor? Anise. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like, like licorice. And it really adds that's good. a subtle, interesting flavor to this. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this up. I'm going to throw this in with the onions. It's not a real obvious flavor that you pick out, but it really does. It's one of these things here, and you know, a lot of times you don't want to add too many flavors, but these flavors all together, I just got to say. It's good are not too shabby. It does smell like, it's like licorice. Mm -hmm. For those who don't like licorice, you would not mind no, this. Not at all. You would not mind this at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in. Those are browning up. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I'm gonna pop these in. Pop some fennel in here. You know, there are some real mushroom experts out there. I know most of the basic groups, but sometimes I will send some of my stuff. I know this is a private Facebook page, but I think they'd probably let you on if you asked. It's called Official Kentucky Mushrooms. Oh, really? And I talked to some guys over there, and I thought this was one thing, and they kind of steered me in the right direction. But one thing about mushrooms, do not assume. We can take that a step further, but we won't. Right. Do not assume on your mushrooms. Know for sure. It's up to you. It's not up to me. I can't look at your mushrooms. If you put them in your body, then you're responsible for what happens. And we know what these are. I got them at the store. Baby bellows. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep turning these around until they get a nice little brown. And I want all these flavors to absorb together. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. And I usually use kosher salt. I just like the consistency and flavor of it. A little bit of pepper. And I'm going to go ahead at this point, I'm going to put just a little bit of dried thyme in here just to get that flavor going. The one thing I noticed when we were eating out the other day when you said, I really like this soup. Yeah. The one thing that jumps out at you is thyme. And with that earthy flavor, with the sweet onions, something that occurred to me was, I would really like to put some white pepper. You which like that, pepper. that white pepper and thyme together oh, has yeah. a very interesting flavor. And as it go along, as you go along here, if you need a little more butter in here, pop it in. I don't want to go too heavy on the salt or too heavy on the pepper, but pepper, really adds. We like pepper in our soup. Yeah. You know what that reminds me? We haven't seen him for a while. But Glenn, the pepper bandit, you know, he was in pepper prison. Really? For a long time. Well, he went to the post office. He was trying to send that pure Peruvian pepper. Really? Which is illegal oh, yeah. to ship. Yeah. Remember that camel he had a I while back? I do remember his camel. He's still got the camel. He rode over here he came through around the field. So you the dog, saw him? Yeah. No, well, no, I got him on camera. Okay. Look, I'll show you some footage. Okay. Here's him coming around the camera, coming around the field, trying to get around the dogs. Snuck through the back door. Really? When we were up looking for mushrooms and stole our child cherry pepper. You are kidding me. So I kind of, I hated to do it, but I called the pepper police. Did you? Last time I heard he was in Paducah peddling pepper. Really? On his way to Peoria. Wow. Don't know, but wow. I'm just saying. That's a crazy story. You know story. how he is. He's out of control. Yeah. And you know what? I hate to say this, but sometimes he has an accomplice. And the thing is, we've never seen her face, but they have recorded messages. Her name's Patricia, mm -hmm. the pepper pusher. That's what they call her. Really? Patricia, the so pepper pusher. He has an accomplice then. I didn't has an accomplice, wow. yeah. You remember um, when we first got to know them, we were on the Alaskan cruise, on the Country Kitchen Alaska That's cruise, right. and we thought he was so nice, and it's she was so, so nice. Sweet. Yeah. And he is. He's just got a pepper problem. <laughs> yes, he does. And at this point, I'm going to take a little bit of white wine and I'm just going to deglaze and I'm going to just reduce that down because that flavor is really going to come in nice there. And that was probably mm. a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons. And I'm going to let that reduce for just a minute. That smells good. That does smell good. All right, we got a really good smell going here. So at this point, I'm going to turn these off. We'll set these, I'll tell you what, we'll just put them back in the measuring cup. Okay. Let them cool for just a little bit before we put them into our processor. So let's get that going. So we're going to take equal parts butter, and that's, what is that? A little more than a fourth of a yeah, stick of butter. a third of a stick, I think. And let's try to put equal parts flour. We're going to make kind of a roux and a thickener for our soup. 
And I'm gonna put in this, because it's a soup, you'll see me doing this a lot, I'm gonna take like half a cube of chicken bouillon mm -hmm. and put in the stock as well. I'm not gonna put a whole lot of salt, but I am gonna put some more thyme. Thyme really adds a lot to this. And we're gonna come back with our flour. And we're just gonna thicken that up. And I'll tell you what, if you will you like? go ahead and pour that chicken stock in here. This is gonna be a cup. And a cup of heavy cream, or half and half, whichever you prefer. Mm -hmm. To your desired thickness. Now, if you wanted to put a little more flour in there, you could do that. So we're gonna let that thicken up just a little bit. As we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bouillon cube in there, half of one. I'm gonna put some more pepper. Because we like pepper. Now, watch your white pepper. Just a couple dashes. It really, really adds something. Oh, that yeah. in combination with the thyme, I think makes this. Now I'm gonna take this. It's like, oh, the smell. You smell that? Yeah. Let me get all of that in there. All the good stuff. Then I'm gonna puree that. Now you could use a immersion blender, but mm -hmm. I don't like wearing it. What do you think? It looks Is that yum. to your liking? I think so. Okay, at this point we're gonna add our mushrooms. Man, oh man. Yep. Now there was one point in time when I would, would not consider eating this. And then Miss Nikki came along and said, Yum. Let's try these mushrooms. Now I can't, I can't live without them. All right, so let's mix this in, slowly but surely. Would you mind running out while I'm stirring this to get me some fresh thyme? I will. I got a little garden Just a couple there. sprigs. All right, a couple sprigs. I'll do it. I was so appreciated. Then there's one more thing, and I'm telling you, when all these flavors combine, mm -hmm. it kind of turns magic. So we recently bought some smoked white cheddar cheese, and it's ended up in a lot of things, but I don't know if it ended up any better in anything oh. than this right here. And just go ahead and grate as much as you that as know. you want. We're almost ready. I tell you what, let's do. Let's do a little more cheese right on top. Okay. For the final presentation. A little cracked pepper. A couple of mushrooms. A little sprig of thyme. And look what we have. Beautiful. Look what we have. The bread needs to come out. Can we do that? That was good timing. That was Perfect really good timing. timing. Yeah. That's right. And it is perfect. Yum. Wow, that looks really good. What would Sammy say? Sammy would say, yum, Papa. I think he'd say, yummy, Grandma. Would he? It's always yum, Papa. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, now I want you to try that soup. Okay. I want to make sure it's up to your standard. Because I see gooey cheese, cheese on there, too. Does it work? I could eat all that. What are you gonna eat? Uh, you know what, I need a spoon. You did good. Now that might seem like a lot of flavors clashing around. Oh, no, that's but good. But let me tell you what, they combined into something. Amazing. I think it's kind of special. It's very good. Oh. Yes. I'm happy. Delish. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Because we have a break. Mm -hmm. and we're doing things out of order here. Normally we'd have our salad done, but I wanted to do this while all that was happening. Let's take a break and eat our soup. Okay. So we have the energy to make our salad, which we normally made first, but that's another story. Okay. Be back in a minute. So not too long ago, went to another restaurant. And we were eating with our friend Lisa. Mm -hmm. And Lisa's been on the show. She tried some fish. She doesn't like fish, but she liked our fish. She did. We had a salad with them. Mm -hmm. And she liked it a lot. And she likes pickled beets, which we have pickled beets right. right there. She was having some friends over and she said, Tim, how would you make that salad? She put me on the spot. So I thought, okay. So I started trying to analyze it in my mind. So I thought, I think that was a fig, some type of a fig glaze or something right. like that. And I knew there was probably olive oil in it. Mm -hmm. So there's your sweet and there's your oil. Now you need a little bit of tang, so I thought maybe a little red wine vinegar. And this was a really sweet salad, it was really good. And I thought maybe just a little bit of honey. And then there was a, some salt in there, so you gotta get all the all right. the savory stuff going on. 
So I thought, okay, I'm going to put just a little bit of Greek seasoning in there. And that would take care of the salt and the pepper and right. some other things. There were some figs in there. Mm -hmm. Love figs. But the best part of it was the sliced beets. Mm -hmm. It really made it. Now, if you don't like that, you don't have to put those in there. You can put apples and you can put goat cheese. You can put all kinds of things right. in there. And then there was some pecans sprinkled over the top. So I, I was on the phone talking to Lisa. Right. And you were in the background writing, writing it down. things writing down. It down. Thank goodness. Because we mixed it up after that. And it was really good. And yeah. it was really close. Let's start with four tablespoons of fig glaze. You can buy this about any store. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And let's put some honey in there to thicken that up and give it some sweetener. Let's go two tablespoons of that. And then we'll come back with just a dash of Greek seasoning to set that off. And we'll go ahead and chop some figs up. We could put those in there. We're gonna chop those up real fine. These are two different type of figs that we're using. You can use whatever you can find, but figs make a wonderful little addition to this salad. They have a nice sweet taste, but yet the texture with the seeds is just wonderful. Tell you what, if you wanted, if you wanted to take and saute some shallots oh, and bacon good. grease, put in there. But go ahead, Miss Farm. Why don't you All try right. that and see what you think? I'm gonna get a hold of a beet here. Now this is a, a little bit sweeter presentation, but oh, it really matches that with the nuts and the beets. Mm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Can you dig it? And the figs. That dressing is so good. It's almost like dessert, isn't it? It is. That's great with spinach too. I like that. Wow, that's a good salad. That'll work. That will, with some soup. The soup, we've already tried that. I'm coming back to that. You try the bread? With the bread, do you mind? Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't even butter it, it's so good. Let me break a little piece mm. up. That is good, isn't it? Mmm, wow. That's our dessert. You bite into that, and your brain's trying to turn it into banana bread. Mm-hmm. It thinks, wait a minute. There's beautiful, wonderful strawberries yeah, in here. that's good. Look at the color of that. That's fantastic. Glad you like it. I like it better than banana bread. Or zucchini bread. It's kind of got both, the taste oh, of both. It's really good. Fantastic. Ms. Farmer, hard to believe, but our half hour is about up. That's right. That being said, a lot of times I don't write recipes down, but you and Kelly make me write stuff right. down. Once we write it down, where do you find it? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And we have a Facebook page with a lot of friends on them. We talk about stuff, we share recipes, we have fun, but it's so difficult. How do you get on that Facebook page? You hit like. You do not. Yes, you do. That's all there is to it. Our half hour is up, but there's one thing I really need to say. What is that? It's all about good times, good friends, good eats. Let's eat. I'm going to eat this soup. You know what? I want some of that too. And we'll see you next week right here from the Farmer's Kitchen. Yay.